I'll be back for a Phantom Pain shootout. Oh, uh. There we go. It's time for another Phantom Pen shootout. And today, I'm going to do a shootout that I know has been anticipated for a long time by a number of people. I'm sorry I had to make you wait for such a long time, but one of the pens had to be returned from a repair shop, and I could not influence that process. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Mont Blanc 146 versus the Mont Blanc 149. Two fantastic pens. Um, Let's not go into the discussion of whether Mont Blanc pens are the ultimate fountain pens on earth. I mean, they're not the, 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 the pinnacle of evolution or anything. Some people seem to think they are. Well, if you do, that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, I, I like them too. Um, but <clears throat> Sorry, that's, that's really not what I want to go into today. Today, I would like to try and compare them. So obviously, the 149, they're both Meisterstück pens. The 149 is the flagship of Mont Blanc, and this is a really big pen. It's not so much the length, but the girth is very impressive. Uh, I can't believe I just said that, but I did. The 146 is smaller, but as you know, size doesn't really matter, uh, and it's still a fantastic pen. So, if you need a huge ink supply, then the 149 is great. Both pens are piston fillers, so that means that I think you can fill up about, well, something like this part of the, of the barrel or something. In any case, it's a lot of ink. This will last a long time. Look at the girth of this barrel. Look at the girth of a, uh, just grab this, more normal sized pen. Look at the difference. It's it's ridiculous. So it holds a lot of ink. It has a fantastic 18 karat gold nib, which is two-tone. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I seem to remember I, yeah, I got this in double broad. Um, great pen. Now the 146 it's a bit more modestly sized. There's nothing wrong with that, um, and I like this a lot be because it is more modestly sized. I mean, if you have a huge pen, you'll attract attention, <clears throat> and that can be a good thing, but you know, writing with this, to me, the 149, it can be a bit excessive. I mean, it's huge. It's, you know I have large hands. Look at this pen. It's, it's ridiculous. So, that's cool, and if you're looking to impress people with the size of your pen, then that's a great pen. But, you know, for everyday writing, I have to be truthful, I prefer the 146. So, I think it's it's pleasant to use. 14 karat gold nib, very, very smooth, not any less smooth than the 18k nib on the, uh, the 149. Another two-tone nib. This one seems to have a little bit more silver color on it than the 149's nib. It would be interesting to show you the nibs side by side, I think. As you can see, the 149 nib, that's a, a Mont Blanc number 9 uh, nib, is bigger than the number 6 nib of Mont Blanc. Um, but, as I said, two fantastic nibs. So, I think that's pretty much all I can say. The 149 is just bigger. They're both smooth nibs, they're both pleasant to use, they're both piston fillers, so... Okay, time for a writing sample. Now, you know that I show you, I try to show you during these shootouts how to disassemble the pens. But before I get any questions with Mont Blanc, you can forget that. You cannot disassemble these pens yourself unless you have specialized tools. These tools are not sold by Mont Blanc to private persons, to companies, it's only Mont Blanc. So either you make something yourself, or you just don't disassemble them, which is what I do. Uh, occasionally, I, I, you know, I, I had both of these sent to Mont Blanc for, for maintenance, this one for a slight repair, and the other one just for maintenance. I got them pre-owned. It's what you do. You will pay. It's that simple. You cannot do home maintenance on this. But the good thing is, you pay... I don't even think it was such a, a huge amount of money, and what you get back is a pen that is literally good as new because they look after it, they do stuff, and for me, the, the, the experience was very pleasant. I've also heard of people whose experience was not so good, but I can only talk about myself, and, you know, my experience was very good. So there you have it, the Mont Blancs. I think it's time I just show you how they write side by side. I hope this was useful. 
And um, any questions, comment below. And I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here is a moment I know a lot of you have been waiting for a writing comparison between the Mont Blanc 149 and the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146. They're both Meisterstück pens, I forgot to say it there, but they're both Meisterstück. Okay. Let's start with the 146. I'm not going to write down Meisterstück and all that. I'll just label this 146. And I'll label that 149. In the left corner, with a 14K nib, we have the 146. In the right corner, with an 18K nib, we have the 149. Okay, so, writing. skipping there, and just inked it up, this happens. Um, I really, really like this nib. I, I, I love it, in fact. I think it's very responsive, it's very pleasant to use, um, absolutely love it. Now let's move to the 149. Big skipping there. So that is some serious nibbage. Then again, the 146 doesn't have a small one either. This is double broad, this is broad. You see the difference? Um, I think the 146, I seemed to remember it was just a little bit more flexible, but now that I felt the 149 again, I'm not so sure. I'll do this side by side. So this was the 146. And this is the 149. You know, it's just awesome to use these two pens. It's it's they are so pleasant to use. I know they are ridiculously expensive, which is why I got them pre-owned. And whether they are worth the full hype and, and whether they are indeed the most exclusive fountain pens in the, in, the, in the world, I'm not sure. It's up to you. In any case, I think as to flexibility, that isn't such a big difference after all. Um, all I can say is these are two magnificent pens. Um, deciding between the two is very difficult. If you need a huge pen with a massive ink capacity, you need the 149. But the 146 in that regard isn't bad either. It's not. I know it's smaller, has a little less girth, but it still holds a lot of ink. The nibs on both pens are extremely smooth, are pleasant to use, are responsive, are springy. Um, I cannot decide between the two. I cannot decide which one I like better. So, you know, I'll be truthful. As far as I'm concerned, this is a draw. I cannot pick a winner. So, pick whatever you like. If you have smaller hands, definitely go for the 146. If you need to impress people to the death, go for the 149. And anything in between, you know, get another pen. But it's... it's they are amazing. Okay, so... I hope that was useful. And, um... I thank you for watching. Let's write that down, just to write a little bit more of these pens.
146. That's all there's to it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.